Hello friends out there in YouTube land. Rob here today. We are going to edit some wedding photos online. I'm just going to check the stream real quick to make sure everything's going nicely. And uh, we'll get back to that here in just a moment. Let's see. So we're getting ready to start a live stream. It looks like we've got a nice stream health. And uh, we'll make sure everybody can hear me. And it looks like you can hear me just fine. So I think we're, I think we're doing pretty good. Today we're going to be uh, just using the computer, I've got a wide shot here set up so you can see just kind of how I'm going to do some of my edits. And I'm just going to walk you through the process. Uh, if you want to know, we're using Yellow Box, and any of your comments that you guys might have will pop up right over here, and I'll do my best to get to them. Otherwise, we'll go straight through, uh, go straight through all of that. Okay, so enough is enough. Let's jump over here to the images. All right, so I'm in my library and I've got a selection of images. I guess a good place to start for how I edit is to actually move back to the library view from the develop view and actually look at all the images that I've got. When I have a wedding that comes in, the very first thing that I do is I go through and I categorize all the images in the entire wedding from one star to five star. And these star ratings over here specifically will help me determine what set of photos that I'm working on. So I rate one star is a detail shot, anything that is not a person, right? Um, and I set my flag to is equal to one star. And then when I do that, you'll notice I've got these different versions of these detail shots. So when you've got something like, we had three photographers on this one, we have 1500 uh, images here. Um, Going through a rating system like this with the stars makes it easy, specific to weddings, one star is detail shots. Uh, two stars are pre-wedding shots, as you could imagine. Uh, three stars over here are uh, the, well, yeah, we clicked off that, is actually the wedding itself. Okay, wedding shots. Four stars is the after party, you know all of your toasts in the reception, and five stars are the formal shots. And so today, what we're going to be working with are the five star, the formal shots. And after I go through and get them arranged into their categories, the next thing that I do is I actually give them a, a, um, a flag or unflag rating. So I may have liked this photo, but I didn't like that photo. And notice I won't even mess with the photos that I don't like as far as editing. You know, I won't even use them. That one wasn't used, this one was, you know, such like that. Uh, once that's all said and done and they all have a flag rating, I go ahead and select that flag right here. And I use these colors independently in here only as a way to determine what group of photos I'm working with within a, a set. In this case, I've just flagged all of the these photos that are red as images that were taken inside of the um, venue at a specific location and the other images that were outside. It was so hot, it was 102 degrees that day, so we did not do their images on the beach. Uh, but here's one, as you would see, uh, taken on the beach with flash as everything comes in. And, and I'll share with you, now that we're here to this part, this is uh, where I would normally begin working on my images. And so uh, as we are here, let's go ahead and, and just take that. Let's go over to the develop module and we'll see what we've done. So we, we get a, an image or an image set. In this case, we'll take um, this one or any, any one of these, it doesn't necessarily matter. We're working backlit here and we needed to make sure that we were able to focus and not get too much contrast on his head. Uh, so we used a lot of light in the front and this was our before shot, and this is after initial corrections. So we go through and we just correct for exposure and some color, some desaturation uh, effects that we're going to go through there. And we'll worry about some masks later uh, on this highlight spot area. But as you can see, um, we also work with our bride from different locations and uh, you know different, different shots here. Uh, the important thing to note is right now it's time to go over and work on um, skin correction. Our bride here, uh, may be a little bit difficult to see, has some skin correction issues that we need to think about. And as we zoom in right there, we can even zoom in a little bit more to 300% here. You can notice that the skin itself um, has some blemishes 
those are before and those are after. And so we're using a, a brush that I've created to help get to this effect, and that is to help moisturize and smooth the skin, but after we'll use a different brush to actually get rid of these splotches. We'll actually go from uh, Lightroom into Luminar to do a little bit more skin smoothing. So the way this works is pretty simple. Let me just grab an image that hasn't been worked with yet, and uh, this one definitely has. Okay, and we'll go ahead and grab our brush, as you can see right up there. Um, I'm actually working with two things. You can see I'm grabbing my brush tools, um, as well as using my, my physical Wacom brush right there. And you will notice that on the screen, there's already a pip. There's a little pop right there where we've already adjusted this image. This one too, and this one as well. Now I'm not working with a lot of the different colors right now. I'm not working with a lot of the different um, exposure. I'm just working with the skin at this point. Now we can we can go ahead and, and work with this lady here. This is one of our um, bridesmaids. Uh, but I want you to see that I'm just gonna click a spot usually on the arm, which is where I'll begin. I'll also make my point a little bit bigger and then I will just begin painting and the important part about this brush is that we're actually darkening the skin a little bit here too instead of lightening it so as we are moving around um, we can we want to make sure that we're not getting the wrong area okay and so we're actually just kind of moving through here now in this brush properties right we've got it set up so that we've got uh, a skin darkened profile and then we have our color correction or our texture correction. We can actually uh, choose, now that we've got this whole area masked off, just how dark we want the skin to be. And in this case, I think I might actually update the brush here so that it's not as dark as it was. And it's simple just to update skin darken preset. Okay, so that's it. We then move to the next one. Now I like to do several different shots when I'm doing these so that I have a, a lot to work with once I get back into um, you know, Photoshop or Lightroom. Now, this is an area, too, where it's tempting to go through here and just zoom in 300% and start working on adjusting for these blemishes. But I got to tell you, if, if you do this with every single photo, you will miss a lot, of, a lot of skin correction issues. You'll miss a lot because we, we're working with multiple steps. Uh, we want to not work with multiple steps on each image, and instead we want to work with just one simple single step that gets us to where we want to be. So right now is our uh, skin uh, correction step. And it's our first time that we're doing skin correction. And um, something else I want to talk about is make sure you've got auto mask turned on right here. And if you're using a Wacom tablet like, like down here, then you'll have the ability to uh, choose and change the different brush sizes just by using the different little scroll pads based on where your brush actually is and uh, and what you're doing. Um, it just makes it pretty simple and easy. So from here, uh, we've got a relatively large brush for this size of an image. If we zoom in, we would want it a little smaller, uh, even more than that. And now we're just kind of zooming around right like that. Okay. And we do this with all of the images that we see. Now she's got... See, on this, this lady right here, this skin darken would be too much. So while we're looking, right, um, we also have to be thinking about who it is that we're working with. And it's simple to adjust just for this single time. We'll just double tap the whites in the white uh, exposure palette over here and move on. And we'll notice that when we switch images, it goes back. And so we have to double tap those whites again, just to make sure that our exposure maintains the same. Now, this particular brush is pretty good for um, most darker skin tones. I usually will use Skin Soften Light for lighter skin tones, right? Uh, but that light there doesn't mean lighter skin tones. It means not as heavy of a correction. Okay, let's see how we're looking. Looking pretty good. Now we're coming over to our groom right here not much correction needs to be made on him remember right now i'm not working in my histogram for any of this stuff i'm just looking for skin correction issues which means i'm going to be looking for my bride again so we've got all of these images that we're jumping right over top of and then this is where we we meet up with our bride again okay now uh, once again as we're looking at this what we're working with is 
um, well, our bride, we're not worried about color right now. We're just working on the skin correction issue. Now, why do we do this early on? Well, we do it early on because the effects that we're doing to our image through color correction and everything are actually cumulative, right? So there's one on top of another. But they're also non-destructive, which means that we can go back and change them. So if we do this step now, right, and we like it, then the final step when I export to Luminar will be allow Luminar to do just some artificial intelligence AI skin softening. And then when I import back to fo uh, Lightroom for my final edit, um, where I just set the file names and, and upload using the um, uh, upload dialog, which is an automatic upload that I like to use, everything will be done, right? And Luminar will have done its job. But if for some reason that I don't like it, then I will know that and have a lot of time for my eyes to see that or that finalized export part. Okay. So we just continue going through here. And if you want to know, I'm just coloring on the different parts of the body that need color correction, just like this. Okay. And this whole process could take some time, right? And since we're live, I'll do a couple more and just see where we're going to be from here. It looks like we got probably... 20 more of these to go through, but you might wonder like which parts of this is what you want to use for the skin correction. Like how do you figure that out? And the reality is you're going to use texture and clarity and sometimes dehaze, although very seldom with dehaze, in order to create a preset. Now that preset will start, but you'll also at that point in time need to do something with the exposure and as well as your color, right? So you don't want to get um, a, a uh, skin correction look that, well, that changes the color of the skin tone. And what you'll find out that usually happens is when you're working with the images, you'll find out there's a skin correction with clarity and texture when you make those values lower. So it's kind of, um, it's called it's turning the noise down on them well not the noise it's just turning the correction down to get that smoothing effect it will also lighten some skin tones at the same time and that's something that you want to make sure uh, that you're not doing you don't want you know you don't want your your groom or your bride or whoever it is that you're working with to not look like who they are right. yeah just like that and I've got the red turned on just so that you can see easier the area that I'm actually coloring. This is pretty simple uh, to go through. And then uh, once we've got that done, like here with all of our brine, that's all said and done. Boom. Okay, the rest of the shots that are coming up in this set appear to be... Um, let's go back to the library and we can see. The rest of the shots coming up in the set, yeah, they're the group shots. So the love story photos are pretty much done. We've got a bride and groom that we'll work on there in a minute. But even within this set, it's now time to look at our exposure of some of these images. Okay. And um, let's, take, let's take an image like this. Okay. There's a lot that's going on here. We've got part of a hand that's left over from over here. We go to our develop module. We'll see that we've done some cropping. Okay, so you can see that we've kind of cropped that out. And we've done this on a Dutch tilt. And we want to give a little bit more um, emphasis to the fact that he's dipping her. If we didn't like the crop, of course, we could reset it. Where's my reset? There we go. Boom. So there's the original. It's not as, not as dramatic. And uh, we actually have some leading lines back here that we could use that would make it a little bit more dramatic and we have to get rid of that arm. So we could get rid of the arm a couple different ways. Uh, if we do the arm first, we can come over here and just go down to 100% and we can actually just begin painting. Okay. And let's see how good of a job it does. Now you'll notice that it took a pretty terrible selection to use. Better selection would have been to come down here and choose something like this. But even here, right, 
isn't exactly what we want. But um, I think we can make this work. Uh, we can make it work by moving it a little bit so that this streak lines up right here. And we can actually push, press it up some. This is precise work. Okay, good. See, even there, that precise work, it moved a little bit at the last moment. So I'm just trying to adjust this just right. I think it moved it again. Okay, but we should be pretty good right there. Yeah, that's okay. Because now when we come back to do our crop, we can actually get exactly what we need right there. And actually, we're gonna do one other thing. We're gonna reset this crop. Um, this is gonna work nicely for us. So let's go to our transform tool. This is a great image to kind of show how to use some of these different tools. So we want to make some things straight and we have to find some long lines that are straight. And a step is a great place to start. Okay, so we line up that line on the step and then we know that the step interacts with this corner right here at a right angle. And once we do, notice how it made it straight originally for us. We've done a pretty good job there already. I'd say that's done. And when we look over here, can't even see any of the correction. Maybe you can a little bit, but not really. Maybe. We'll just move this a little bit this way. So. Just lining it up. And I'm doing all this with the Wacom pin. Wacom. And uh, there we go. You'll never even notice that. It looks great. Okay. So the next thing to do is actually just look at our histogram. And if we turn our highlight overwarning protection, we'll notice that we've got some areas that are just a little bit too bright, right? Well, well that's easy to see. We could press auto and see what it does. Of course, it's brought down some of those highlights. But we can see that as well. There's a couple of things that are happening here with the image that we need to adjust. Number one are the shadows. We've got to bring the shadows up so we can see their faces more. Number two really is the white balance, right? So our white balance is a little bit too warm. So we've got a much nicer white balance now. We could also choose to pick any neutral area of this white and, and choose a white balance. Problem is, because there's so much overcast correction or color cast in here, we want to make sure that we're, we're all right. We've got a little bit of uh, magenta in here, uh, in our tint, and our temperature is pushed towards the blue side. The other thing that we could do is we could use some more of this hue saturation and luminance area in order to help us brighten up some of the darker spots. Now, we've done a little bit of it, so let's just show you how this HSL has already helped the image. So there's before and after. And what we're doing is getting rid of color casts with the hue saturation and luminance. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna bring this yellow saturation down a little bit. If we bring too much of the orange down, we'll begin affecting our bride and groom's skin tone. So we don't wanna do that. But we can bring enough of it down the orange channel so that this light up here isn't adding a color cast to their skin tone, which that'll work. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we can grab this little saturation pip, PIP pip, and we can grab an area in the background that we want to adjust any color, and we can bring some of that saturation up or down just by moving that up or down. Notice how that's affecting the oranges, so we'll leave that alone can also grab the luminance. Now it's gonna do the same thing. The Problem is if we push our luminance too high, we'll start enter, uh, entering some kind of color artifacts. Okay. So here we go. We can bring some of those highlights down to get that back just a little bit. And the reality is we've got a bit of an overexposure happening right here, which means that in order for this image to pop the way that we want, we've got to add a brush. 
And the only way to do that now is to actually bring the brush tool out. Before we do, I think I'm gonna go with my gradient tool and I'm just gonna pull up right here. And so we can kind of see where our gradient is and I'm just gonna add some exposure. Turn that off. And this can help us also. Okay, so notice how it's balancing out all of the, uh, the difference in colors or the difference in exposure. And that's what we want. We'll pull this up a little bit more. The problem is we don't want this to go too far forward because we'll just get back into the area where we were a moment ago. So this has been helpful for here, but again, it's time for that brush. So I click the brush, right? And I go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and start um, looking at this brush and thinking about my exposure. This needs to be an exposure control brush and it should be a pretty big brush, right? And it should be a soft brush which means it just has a, an area around it that's pretty wide. You can see that the, uh, the inclusion area is pretty wide right there. And instead of painting the background, this is gonna kind of give an, uh, a vignette a little bit, maybe a little bit smaller. I'm actually just gonna paint the, the bride. I'll paint right here. Boom. Now, because I've got auto masking turned on, it's going to pick up on the whites more than it picks up on the darks. And any area where it makes a mistake, it just go in and erase, okay? So I can move over here to 100% and start moving this window around from the navigator view. And I wanna do exactly what we talked about. I wanna begin erasing where it has oversaturation. Well, where it reaches in where I don't want it to. And it, right now, it's not necessarily important that every little part of her white dress is white because there are different values in all of this, right? So it's okay for it to go either way. This red marker that you see that I'm painting with is just an overlay tool that lets me know that I've hit that area with the brush, okay? While I'm down here, I'll even get her a foot. Why not? Can even get some of that in the background. At this point, I'm gonna follow it up around. There we go right there. And we can see that there's a little bit hidden there and we follow right back up to here, okay? And a little bit underneath here, all right. So what I wanna make sure is that I'm not getting too much of the background. Him, he and she, him and her, fine. But the background, not so much. So what we're gonna do is turn this color overlay off and then we're gonna check out the before and after. So you can see before, after, before, after, before. So this has really painted nicely. It also lets us get a little check to make sure we don't have any areas in the background that are going to irritate us. Now we need to go ahead and paint uh, them. And you know what, I, before we do I think I might actually get some of this right here. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we click new brush. This is a new exposure brush. I'm going to move in to 100%. I'm going to head up here. We've got a pip there for our skin correction. We've got a pip there for our exposure correction on the dress. Now let's work with some exposure correction on our bride and groom. Okay, and so in this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the masked overlay. So I can see I put another pip down and I'm just really going after their skin, not so much their clothes. Okay, and we'll go after her hair a little bit. Sometimes going after the hair right now is a little tricky uh, because you want your hair to be done slightly differently than your body, but that's okay. Um, we'll see how it works. Now that we've got them selected, a little bit of overlap here is fine. We can turn that off. We can actually zoom out some. We don't wanna be all the way in here. We can zoom out some and see where exactly we corrected that exposure for her skin and if we like it. Before and after, I do like it, I think that there's, um, I think there's a color shift that's happening here, which means that I can keep my exposure up here at the uh, three quarters of an exposure, three quarters of a stop over, or I can bring it down to about 50, right? And then use my shadows and highlights. Yeah, and I think that's gonna work better. We can kind of trump up the whites here a little bit too. There we go and give her a little bit of that rich tone 
I'm going to do that by just pulling the actual black levels uh, of that exposure brush down. Bingo. I like that. Okay. There we go. All right, so we've got our before, and now we've got our after. We've, of course, adjusted for the original color cast of that uh, light. The, there's a good likely here that when this picture was taken, the flash that I was using didn't fire. Um, may have happened, it may not have happened. There was, we had a couple people shooting at this point in time, and so we were working with um, multiple strobes, or multiple triggers off of the same strobes, so that could have been the case. But anyway, working in RAW, you can see that we can very easily correct that color. The next part that we're going to move to, I guess that doesn't really need to be closed. The next part that we're going to move to is, I think here, I think we're actually done with this image, right? Now, because we got that image completed, and because it has a lot of similar characteristics to these, we can actually click on this image, right click on another image while pushing shift or left click and now all of these images have been selected okay and at this point i'm going to click the synchronize button off to on and i'm just going to tap sync and i'm going to tell it to synchronize everything except for my brushes no local adjustments in brushes and it should go right ahead and begin correcting all of these for color in fact, I'm going to sync it one more time and tell it to sync my gra uh, graduated filters. That should help out a lot. There we go. And if you see down here at the bottom, we can actually see it's pulling in those filters. So this one worked out, turned out nice. This one, not so much. So we can control D to deselect these and just select this one again. Now, you might wonder what happened. Uh, these exposures had different tonalities. That's what happened. Okay. And we can bring that up just by doing that right there. Done. See that? But now that we're there, we can actually go ahead and begin correcting these just like I showed you. you just bring up the exposure some here. Bingo. Look at that. So we were managed to correct quite a few of these errors uh, just by copy and pasting uh, these settings. Sorry, guys. Uh, bingo. There's still some work to do with these, which would be like face. We should come back and get the faces and such. Uh, but for right now, we're more than more, more than halfway there. And remember, this step right now, we're getting ready to wind up the video. This step right now is preparing the images to go over to Luminar. And so really, this step was actually part two. The first step is getting all of the images imported to Lightroom and then having the images rated, right? and then, um, in this case, doing skin correction, blemish correction. A little bit of color correction happened on these because you could see all of the images have some amount of color correction which has been brought into them already in the hue, saturation, and luminance, but this isn't the final, right? Um, so there we are, there you see it. We had our original image over here this is our before, and this is our after. It's very nice. So we do this for all of the images, and then we take them over to Luminar, and Luminar will, well, let me show you what Luminar happens. Let me actually just show you right here. I'll do a real quick edit in Luminar. We're gonna do, choose Luminar 4. We'll edit an adjustment with Lightroom copies. Okay. Um, just so that you can have this kind of wrapped up at, at one time, um, Luminar is going to give us the ability uh, to do some AI corrections that normally would take longer for me to actually do in Lightroom. 
okay? And so I've got Luminar opened up. It's gonna go ahead and bring this image in. I suggest exporting your images as Photoshop files, PSDs, to a folder and then opening Luminar so you can batch edit. Otherwise, if you send your image from Lightroom to Luminar, um, it's just a bit of an, just a bit of an issue because you have to do it one by one instead of all together. Okay, great. So we have no looks applied to this yet. This is the image as it imported, and I've got some presets down here. You can also see that some of the presets have some squaggly things going on. Don't worry about that, it just is what it is right now. It's just a preview because the computer's recording and we're streaming and all this other stuff. Now I've got some images that I've already put together. Uh, one of them is I call Bling, like Bling 1, 2, and 3. It's great for detail shots, not so much for people. You can see why if I add the Bling filter. Uh, it works great for wedding rings, right? Uh, not too great, right? Really bad here. I've got another one called Bling Matte. Really brings out the detail. Also, Bling, Bling Matte, Bling 1, 2, 3, those are really great for detail shots, not people and nothing that's too busy like this. So macro shots of the ring is where this works. Um, one that I have for images like this is what I call Skin Fix. Now Skin Fix has some portrait enhance and some AI skin enhancement in here um, and a little bit of color correction. But if you'll notice, I don't usually like to use Skin Fix on multiple people, right? Because it blocks out, it has a hard time determining one or two, you can see it's adding this extra thing right there. So not good for skin fix here. Keep multiple people most of the time out of, uh, out of your shots when you're using um, Luminar's AI skin correction. But then I get these ones that I call slightly matte one, two, and three. Now slightly matte is actually really, really nice. My slightly matte three goes along with my portraits uh, and allows me to just kind of bring in some of that matte characteristic and just kind of make them look a little nicer. So this is where I would begin my correction. I would probably come over here with slightly matte or this Greg Portrait 2. And then I would look and see what's actually happening. Yeah. I think slightly matte is the way to go. And I'd go ahead and come over here into my structure and my AI enhance and begin working. In fact, here I'm going to go into my portrait enhancer and I would turn off things like um, skin enhancer. I'd turn that off on this one. Yeah, there we go. Much nicer. And then I would come into my color and I would just look at my, um, my AI enhance, find out where it's really kind of popping things up. I would add a little bit of denoise, like we've got right there. And then I click done. At this point in time, I'm applying and it's coming straight back over to uh, Lightroom. So we've got this nice uh, portrait image or uh, moving image uh, where they're uh, you know, doing this dip and they've got their long flowing veil is going on. It looks real pretty. Uh, we were able to uh, correct for the skin in Photoshop or in Lightroom as well as color correction, we came into Luminar to bring out some low contrast feel. We'll see them right side by side here in just a second. Yeah. There it is. There's a before and there's our after. Nice, good looking shot. All right, that's been it. I hope you guys find this helpful. Lots of things to do. We do this with each one of them. Of course, I've talked through it. When you batch edit um, more images at one time, it makes the entire process go faster. Hope you found it helpful. Catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.